In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Was anyone listening a few minutes ago when the priest prayed that prayer, the collect of the day? The collect of the day is that prayer in our service that comes just before the first reading towards the beginning of the service, usually designed to set the tone of the day. Sometimes the tone of the day is easy to understand. It's Christmas or Easter or something. And the collect of the day is striking and beautiful. Often, however, the collects of the day are quite forgettable. Then there is today's collect of the day, which often causes a curious smile on those who are listening. It starts, Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. Some of those admonitions about Bible study are familiar to us. We hear, read the Bible, mark it up, learn the Bible. We have heard such directions often. But digest them? Inwardly digest them? Let's consider that. My sermon today is about digestion. Apparently, this prayer was written for the 1549 prayer book, one of the first prayer books of the English Reformation. When the reformers were urging and trying to frame a return to reading the entire Bible, not just parts of the Bible. Apparently, in some places, there were so many saints being remembered every day that the regular course of reading the Bible in a sort of ongoing daily pattern, the regular course was being interrupted too often. So the new lectionaries, including that of 1549, set out forms of reading longer sections of the Bible, reading passages straight through. I like the idea. I like reading the Bible in its entirety, straight through various books, instead of just skipping to the parts we understand or agree with. One reason I like this practice is because it teaches me, it shows me that not all parts of the Bible should be understood or even accepted 
in the same way. Try it for yourself. I follow my Lord Jesus Christ in this manner of Bible interpretation, a method that honors some texts more than others. When someone asked Jesus one day, which commandment in the law was the greatest? Jesus did not say, well, they are all equally important. No, he didn't. He said, there are two that are the greatest, love God and love your neighbor. The greatest studies of Scripture continue to produce that conclusion. Again, some parts of the Bible really are more important than other parts. And the best way to understand this is to actually read the Bible. This is my practice when I lead the various Bible studies of this cathedral. When we gather in those classes, we actually read books of the Bible, chapter by chapter, straight through. Sometimes the reading is a bit boring. Sometimes it is wild and illogical. In that reading, though, we realize quite spiritually that some parts of the Bible are way more valuable than others. <clears throat> In fact, I would claim that this way of reading the Bible is the only way to understand today's prayer, this collect of the day, which says that we should digest Scripture. I do not want to be too graphic here, but think about that word digest. To digest something is to consume something so that our body appreciates and keeps the valuable parts, but expels and gets rid of the other parts. Get it? Good Bible study digests Scripture. Getting nourishment from the valuable bits, letting the other bits pass right on through. Consider today's gospel. The words of Jesus. Today's text is part of the so-called apocalyptic theme of Scripture. Apocalypse is a theme that appears occasionally throughout the Bible. We think of these passages as end time passages. The Old Testament book of Daniel contained wild images of the end times, full of beasts and bronzes, rams and goats and desolating sacrileges. The book of Ezekiel did too, with Gog and Magog. And today, in Luke chapter 21, even Jesus 
speaks words of end time destruction and warning. Finally, of course, the grand master of all end time literature is that last book of scripture, the revelation to John. Indeed, my Bible studies this past fall have chosen that very book, the revelation to John, as our book to read. I warned them not to read it, but they did. I've described that book as a set of, it's a set of illogical and inconsistent dreams that the writer delivers to people who are suffering persecution and distress. The revelation to John is similar to a wild dream or even a nightmare that wakes you up at night. You have dreamed something truly weird like seven seals and four horses and dragons and beasts and some lewd woman of Babylon. It's all so clear. You wake up in the middle of the night and write down your dream. It makes sense. But the next day, when you read what you have written down, it makes no logical or systematic sense at all. That's the book of Revelation. For me, however, there are yet two redeeming features in such end time writing. One feature is the repetitive instruction in the midst of continuous expressions of confusion and fear and urgency. The revelation to John repeats over and over again, those who endure to the end will be saved. Hang on, hang in there. It's the same thing we say to each other when we are in pain. Those who endure to the end will be saved. You will be saved, says the book. In fact, that instruction to endure is exactly what Jesus says today in his little apocalypse, the last verse. By your endurance, you will save your souls. The second feature, the second redeeming feature of the book of Revelation and other literature like it is its wild and rich description of heaven and the throne in heaven, a glorious altar surrounded by singing angels, saints, and martyrs. At the center of that heavenly altar are not the violent symbols of worldly power, like lions or horses or weapons or missiles, but a lamb. In fact, at the center is a slaughtered lamb who turns out to be king of kings and lord of lords. Christians who endure to the end will not be those who worship the violent 
and oppressive powers of this world. But those who worship lambs, those who have suffered, those who are singing, Our collect of the day says, grant that we may so hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest Scripture. Some parts of Scripture have the vitamins and proteins we need to thrive. Other parts are the rough fiber that have a function, but which are best allowed to pass right through our system. This sermon is about digestion. Do not be led astray by wars and destruction. Sadly, those features of our world have been with us throughout human history. There are few times in human history without violence. Our role will be to be the peacemakers in those times over and over again, enduring to the end. Do not be led astray by earthquakes and floods and moons that seem to be blood red like there was earlier this week. Again, those features of our world have been with us throughout history, not just human history, but Earth's history. Jesus says that many will come and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them, he says. The Jesus we follow is the one who behaves completely differently from the powers of this world. In the midst of war, there will be Jesus making peace. Follow that Jesus. In the midst of those creating terror and confusion, there will be Jesus creating steady calm. Follow that Jesus. In the midst of lies, there will be Jesus speaking the truth. Follow that Jesus. In the midst of those creating hate, there will be Jesus creating love. Follow that Jesus. Holy Scripture contains all sorts of those things, even the bad things. Our Bible is a collection of 66 very different books, written probably over a 1,000-year span. Scripture includes most every behavior and event we can imagine. Different parts of that Scripture have different purposes. There's no way that every verse can be understood or used in exactly the same way. Instead, Scripture is meant to be digested. The parts of Scripture that endure to the end, the parts of Scripture that nourish our souls, will be those which inspire love and peace, those who provide a heavenly vision of saints and angels singing glory to God in heaven. Amen.